Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. While Abraham and Isaac were walking up one side, the Lord Jehovah Jireh was walking up the other side. Amen. And when Abraham raised up that night to come down, believing with all of his heart that he was going to slay, and then by the power of resurrection, he was going to raise him from the dead. And God said, Abraham, stay now thine hand. Hallelujah. How many of you believe they felt a lot of daggers in your life? that had been ready to come down on you. But the angel of the Lord stepped in and said, Stay now thy hand. We even read of places in the Word where the Lord Himself spoke in the heavens and said, Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. Hallelujah. Oh, we've rebuked Him with these tongues and these mouths in this realm. But God rose up and said, Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. I don't believe that was just for a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday but I believe it is a sound that still goes through the heavens uh, even in this day and in this hour when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will lift up will raise up will build up a standard against him hallelujah and the Lord said to Abraham, Stay now thy hand. For now I know that anything I ask of thee, you'll trust me with. Oh, do you trust him this morning knowing he cannot do you evil. He can only do you good. Oh, And the Bible said that Abraham looked and lo, called in the thickets. Was a ram was that yet God will provide. What will God provide? Himself. Yes. Himself. Himself will step in. Yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can the girls sing that the Holy Spirit fill this place? Can you remember enough of that to sing Yes, <laughs> 
destruction. Hallelujah. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. For they who wait upon the Lord. Come on, worship Him in here, little one. Shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings like an eagle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They'll run and they'll not be weary. They'll walk and they will not faint. You got supernatural strength on the inside of you this morning. We got something that's raising us up. Hallelujah. We got something that's lifting us up this morning. Come on, worship Him. I feel the anointing of worship here right now. Hallelujah. My throat's a little raggedy, but that's not going to stop me from praising Him. That's not going to stop me from worshiping Him. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place this morning. I believe there's things God wants to do supernaturally for everybody in this place this morning. Where He talks about satisfying our mouth with good things. There was another place in Scripture where David said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Everybody say, the Lord is good this morning. Honey, I'm just trying to act on your worship for a minute. I'm not trying to take over. I'm trying to just act on your worship just for a minute. We're preparing an atmosphere so that the power of God can do exactly what He wants to do without hindrance, without barricades, without blockages, without things cheating you out and robbing you up. You see, I studied on that recently again about tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. And that word taste there has to do with the desire. Yes. Desire. Yes. Isaiah says, or David said in, in the psalm that I just quoted there in the beginning, where he said that he satisfies our mouth. Yes. He satisfies our yes. desires. Yes. Come on, y'all. Lift your hands. Anybody got any desire yes. in your heart this morning? The Word says that when you delight, because you've committed your way unto the Lord, that when you delight in the Lord, that He'll give you the very desires of your heart. I've never known God to give anything bitter in my mouth. Everything God puts in my mouth is sweet. It's sweet. It's sweet. It satisfies. It satisfies the longing. Come on, somebody. I feel Him in here this morning. Hallelujah. God wants to satisfy your desire this morning. What do you desire from the Lord? Don't let your desire be small. Let it be big this morning. Because God is good. You have, I'm telling y'all, you better start studying the Bible. Study these words. Every place where God says He's good or goodness. Look it up. In the strongest concordance, it says it's good in the widest sense of the word. Not only uh, figuratively, but literally. You need to start experiencing some literal things. Some literal manifestation of the goodness of God in your life. Oh, I feel His presence. Hallelujah. This is the last day of March. And I felt so strong in my spirit. God has what we would call from a spiritual or prophetic standpoint, some midnight suddenlies for us. Lift up your hand. God's going to give you some midnight suddenlies. I believe before midnight tonight. Everybody say before midnight tonight. That God's going to give me some midnight. What is a midnight situation in your life today? And you have a desire of the Lord for that thing to be satisfied so that you don't no longer have to pray about it. You don't no longer have to release your faith to believe that thing into existence. But then it becomes a living reality today. We know it's done in the Spirit. We know He completed it over 2,000 years ago. But many of us have yet to see the literal fulfillment and the manifestation. And I believe God is saying today is our day to receive that. To see David also. I love David. I guess I got him in my spirit today. He said, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I quoted a little bit differently to what King James wrote it, but it's still the same application. He said, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But I make it personal. 
And I say, I believed. I would have fainted. Right. But I believed. Yes. And I see the goodness of the Lord in the land where I'm living. Because Janet needs to see some goodness in her land. Janet needs to see. Ruby needs to see it. Dwayne needs to see it. Linda needs to see it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joanne, you need to see the literal goodness of the Lord by suddenlies in some midnight situations in your life today. So you lift your hand and begin to worship God like it's already there because it's going to happen. And things are going to manifest today. Come on, just worship Him. I don't know. Do you have more songs? Or you re I'm just trying to get it ready so you can take it and run with it. Come on, just lift your hands and begin to glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Come on, open your mouth. Tell God what you want Him to do. Tell God what you need to see in the land where you're living. <laughs> Parents, teach your kids how good God is. Don't make them children work for everything and earn everything. That's not goodness. That's flesh works. You teach them good work ethic, but you never ever teach your children that everything you receive in life, you have to work hard for it. Because you don't. You don't. The goodness of the Lord will flow in your land. And these kids need to know the goodness of God. And they need to see it. Come on, one more time. Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet and worship the Lord this morning. Come on, God's doing something in this place. You feel that in the atmosphere? Hallelujah. So when this man of God opens his mouth and begins to release the word over your life, your spirit is ready to receive that seed for impregnation yes, yes. and manifestation. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up those voices and glorify. Big and loud and strong. Open up your mouth and begin to glorify the Lord in this place. He's here. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sweet Holy Spirit. Grew 
And the Lord was with him. And he let none of his words fall to the ground. Everybody say that with me. He let none of his words fall to the ground. Oh, glory. When we speak in the kingdom, when we prophesy, and we are we do so with an awareness. Yes. That despite what we see in the visible, there's a whole nother world. And a whole nother realm. And a whole nother dimension. Oh, glory to God. By faith we understand the world we're framed. By the what? Word of God. So that things which are seen, everybody say which are seen. They were not made from things which do appear. The visible comes out of the invisible and not the other way around. I want to say that again. The visible manifests or comes forth from the invisible and not the other way around. And if you ever figure that out, you can have anything you want from God. Now if you're trying to get the invisible to appear from the visible, it won't happen. Well, glory to God. Because you'll never be able to get over the hurdle of what you're looking at in the visible. That's the reason the Apostle Paul said, why we look not at the things which are seen. And if you're trying to get something to manifest in that thing you're seeing, that's the problem. That's where the faith is being tied up so that it can't work. It's because you're trying to get that thing, you're trying to get supernatural in a natural circumstance. But the invisible produces a new visibility and Samuel had such an anointing on him that he walked in a kingdom realm. Yes. We were teaching you, I don't know when I preached to you the last time. Was it last Sunday? Yeah. We were teaching you Sunday evening, wasn't it? That uh, Samuel is the first place in the Word of God that the word man-child is used. Yeah. It's, he's the beginning of it. He's a prophet. He's a seer. He's a voice that's raised up to break the religious hold that was at shallow and to produce a supernatural move of God in that place where the voice of the Lord could be heard. And God said, I'm getting ready to say something that's going to make every ear in this place tingle. Yes. Well, glory. I'll tell you now, God's getting ready to say something that ain't like the same old. It isn't like the ordinary. It isn't like the mold that's been made. There's a voice of God, the psalmist said, that breaks the mountains and it breaks the rocks. And, it, and I'm telling you, God's getting ready to break some molds. People have spots him in and shut him off and thought he had to do it according to that way. But I'm telling you, the visible is going to come out of the invisible. Samuel said the Lord grew him and, and he waxed strong and he let none of his words fall to the ground. They didn't fall down in that dirt. They didn't fall down on that floor. They went out of his mouth and went into a supernatural realm. Glory to God. Where they could produce something. And by faith we understand that the worlds or the ages, not just the globes and the planet, but the very ages, what has happened, events that you've seen transpire didn't come out of words that just landed on the ground. But those words went out into the atmosphere of heaven. Glory to God. Elam Hashem Elam Amen. That's reading the word teaches you life and death isn't in the graveyard. Death and life isn't in the casket. Death and life isn't in the hospital bed. Death and life in the power of your tongue. Oh, glory to God. By your words you're justified. By your words you're condemned. Amen. And brother and sister, when you've got an understanding of invisible things. You start to speak knowing that what you decree, what goes out of your mouth, doesn't just fall to the ground. That my God have mercy, but it, He let none of His words fall. Every word He spoke hung in the heaven. I said every word He spoke hung in the heaven. And what was He doing? 
for, going to produce manifestation. The harm in the heavens. You see, before God could ever produce uh, all these other things, he had, I, I told you the other day, the chicken come way before the egg. It had to. You'd never got an egg without God had created the chicken to produce the life. You couldn't have seeds in itself. And God didn't have nothing to hang the earth on. Somebody say praise the Lord. You can get on the moon and look down you won't find no strings or cables. And planets ain't tied to nothing. They're just hanging there. Yes, Jesus. Well, glory. I, I might run. Amen. 
And we understood that she had to press through. Hannah did. Her name means favor and grace. Well, glory. And she got in a place of pressing through because Penina had tormented her with her numbers. I got more than you got. And you can't do that in the kingdom. You can't get up in the kingdom and say, I got more members than somebody else. Because it ain't about the numbers and the tally. It's about spiritual maturity and how deep you can get people to understand this revelation of God. Amen. You may have 500 and you may only have 50 to understand what you're saying. Then again, God could give us a thousand today that knows exactly what we're saying. So we leave that with the Lord and continue to travail until the womb is open. And bless God, it's not just travail like we think travail in sorrow, but there is a song that has to come up out of your spirit that will open the womb of the barren bride. Amen. Amen. And so we come to, we come through a lot of stuff. We found out that I uh, Abraham had uh, Sarah and Hagar. Jacob had Rachel and Leah. But Isaac never had but one bride. Well, glory. And that was Rebecca. And he didn't pick her. The Holy Ghost sent her. And he sent her in the evening. And in Genesis, the evening and then the morning is the day. God's day don't start in the morning. God's day starts in the evening. And Zechariah said it's going to be a day like no other. It won't be morning or night, but there shall be light in the evening time. And there's light in the evening time. Glory to God. Uh, amen. El Eder said, God, I can't go all over this city and hunt a bride. I don't know who to pick, but I've got nine camels loaded with gifts. And I'll tell you, God's going to have a bride that's loaded with gifts. She's going to flow in the supernatural. Amen. And walk in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. She's going to be loaded. Amen. She's not going to need nothing from the world. She's not going to have to beg nobody to support. Porter. She's not going to have to beg nobody from door to door to give a dollar or a ten. She is going to have a bride. He's going to have a bride that is dead from head to foot, that is clothed with finest of linen, that has jewels rare, and that sparkles with a fresh revelation and an anointing of God in this hour. Amen. 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 And so she had to, she, she said, God give me, Hannah said, God give me a man child. And if you'll give me a man child, I'll give him back to you. And now we're at the end of the third chapter of 1 Samuel, which began by saying the word of the Lord was very precious in those days because there was no open vision. That open vision means there was no prophetic revelation. There was no prophetic operating in the church. Well, glory. How do you know that? Because seven lamps went out and that's seven spirits of God. Amen. That's the spirit of seeing and hearing and knowing and understanding. Yes. Come on now. And when they went out, God called Samuel's name five times. Mm -hmm. And the last time He called him, He called his name twice. Well, glory. And when He called him first time, it is natural, but the second time He woke up His spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Samuel, I woke you up to tell you I'm getting ready to say and do things that's going to make all of Israel have a tingling ear. Go into that. You know what the root word of that is? Alarm. Like in Joel when he says, sound the alarm. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm. How many know that the trumpet in the Bible ain't some boy blowing a horn on top of a hill, but it is the prophetic sound that comes out of Zion. And you say, praise the Lord. And it'll do one of three things. It'll either call an assembly together or it'll prepare people for war or it'll let you know it's time to move on. Exactly. And this time when God blew the trumpet, He said it's time to move on. I'm getting out of this, this priesthood, this religion. He go, what did Samuel's birth and voice do? It silenced Penina. She no longer could pray about her numbers because as soon as Samuel broke the womb, God give Hannah. Well, glory. More. 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 And God will give you more if you ever get the breakthrough of this Word and this revelation 
You won't live from your spoon to fork and bread to water. You'll get a revelation that'll open up something in your life. Oh, and your mill barrel won't run dry. And your cruise of oil won't never fail. And every time you get ready to give God an offering, every time you reach in, you'll have one. And every time you get ready to pray, there'll be an answer. And every time you get ready to prophesy, God will show you where and when to release that word. And it won't fall, but it'll hang there and produce glory to God. The Bible said the Spirit of God hovered over that deep until God's word spoke. And when God's word spoke, there began to be light and creation and I'm telling you now some of you don't even know it but there are words of prophecy that are hovering over your situation and one more word from heaven is going to produce a creative force that's going to produce ripples in the stream amen and waves in the water hallelujah to God that's the way it works you break the womb and then more are waiting to be born and to come forth you've got so much shut up on the inside of you trying to get out this morning it ain't coming on you it's coming up out of you See, that's where we Pentecostals have missed it. We've always said, pray it down on them. That's wrong. That's wrong biblically, scripturally, doctrinally. Wrong. Pray it on them. Don't pray it on them. If it just gets on them, it'll wash off. It'll wear off. When should they be as dead as they ever were? Don't pray it on them. Pray it in them. Oh, come on, shut it on my fire. Wow, my Lord, you go ask your wife that she has a child for you. Honey, did they lay that child on you? She'll tell you, no, you done it. I swear it. And I travail. Hold on, my shamna. I'll I'm hold you. I sit here and press my way through. That child wasn't on me. That child was in the whole glory. Hey, hallelujah. And let me tell you something about birthing. When nine months gets here, bless your heart, you'd be the most gentlest, ladylike, precious, well, glory, quiet, <coughs> and timid thing there is. You can think that the only thing you can do is just set pretty. But when that baby, well, let me tell you, when we talk about travail, your body begins to do things. Because that baby inside you said, I ain't staying in here no more. I'm out through well, glory. I love my whole shelf by my life. See, it's a process. Life outgrows the seed. And then the seed breaks forth and becomes an a embryo. And then the life outgrows the embryo. The embryo becomes a fetus. And then the life won't be contained in the fetus no more. Come on now. And the fetus becomes an actual baby in that womb. And then that baby just, just can't stay in that womb but so long. When, when my son was born, he weighed 9 pounds and 9 ounces. You look at my little wife. She probably weighed 103 pounds when she got pregnant with him. He weighed 9 nine. She told me and that doctor, I can't do this no more. This baby has filled me up. I don't have no more room. He's big. And they said, done a sonogram and said, honey, he's not big. He just weighs 7 pounds. She said, believe you me, I turn over in bed at night and there ain't nowhere to turn. This baby has filled me up. He's big. They all said, oh no, you'll be fine. Well, she was fine, but she did give birth to a nine pound and a nine ounce kid. And that doctor come in there and said, oh, I'd have never let this happen. I'd have let it happen if it took it way before uh, if I knew he was that big. But you see, her body knew. Yes, right. <coughs> oh, something in you knows. I said, so come on, holy or something in you knows. The preacher preaching and something just coming alive on the inside of you. The singers are singing and something used to leaping on the inside of you. I want to announce to you this morning the body knows. Somebody said, well, which body? The one and only body of Christ is connected to the head. Now, if you ain't connected to the head, you don't know what's going on in the body. But I got a head up here, and when that foot hurts down here, that foot don't tell me it hurts. That head tells me my foot hurts. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, the 
consider this. At the end of nine months, nobody has to get in there and tell their wife. Now, honey, travail. <laughs> honey, go into labor. The body will do that. And then after that, it's more or less according to your tolerance for pain and your demeanor as to how you handle that. That the travail and labor. Everybody don't shout. Everybody don't run the aisle. But you ought to be thrilled when somebody does. You may never dance two steps in your whole walk with God, but it ought to thrill your soul when your neighbor dances. You may be quiet, but I'll tell you right now, you need the Holy Ghost whether you speak quietly or loudly. You need the anointing whether you run or whether you just weep. Every, every birth isn't the same. I never will forget when our first child was born. I'm telling you now, we, we stayed up there all night and, and uh, we'd come out the door and there was a little young lady in the room next to me. I never heard such screaming in my life. I thought, I, I just didn't know what was going on over there. And I went out to get a cup of coffee and that poor old nurse shut that door behind her, fell against that door and pulled that cap off and she was wet with sweat all over mopping her forehead. And I think I might have said, bless your heart or something like that. And that nurse looked up at me and she said, you know it really don't have to be this way. Right. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, if you won't fight the process, right. well, go away. I'm stuck. And I ought to be way further down the road. But the Holy Ghost has stuck me here to tell you that if you'll quit fighting the process, if you just quit kicking against the pricks, if you just give up, Paul, well, he said, if you just slow that horse down long enough, I could tell you something. But you're so busy running from pillar to post, and some people can't sit down and read the Bible five minutes because they're so high strung they can't hardly live with their self. Well, I'm going to preach now. You don't know. Silence torments them. Stillness terrifies them. I don't care whether them fish is biting or not, buddy. I can just get me a chair and sit down. And it blessed my soul just to sit there. Just to sit there. Just to sit there. And once in a while, hear my father bring up a fresh revelation in my spirit. Oh, glory to God. Amen. I've learned I can talk in tongues with them leaves dangling in my face. I've learned, well, glory to God. Somebody say amen this morning. I'm telling you this, we got a generation now that's afraid of quietness. They're afraid of stillness. They're afraid of their own company. Hallelujah. They never say it. They never can be. Oh, if they get along, they're hunting some way to get out of that situation. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So what are we going to do? Well, we're fighting the process. Now, my wife was a trooper. She never let out a yell. I never heard her say a word. Never. That's because she made her mind up before she went in there. It had to be done anyway, so we might as well get in there and get it done. And I'm telling you right now, glory to God, it's going to happen. You can fight all you want to, but I've got an issue. There'll yes, come a time when, when that mother in that bed, she can fight and she can say it ain't going to happen, whatever. Let me tell you, if you want the baby, it will. You can either help it and it'll get over faster, or I guarantee you there'll come a moment when it'll go so far you can't stop it. Well, glory, I hope you're hearing me in the spirit and not in the natural this morning. I'm telling you now, this thing's got to get more perfect. So go to my son, go to my higher. There ain't nothing going to be able to stop it. Not poverty, not disease, not sickness, not death. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Come on. Now, let me say this just a little bit more. You know, my, my sister uh, 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 in law, had my wife's sister, uh, bless God, she, she'd had babies and before they'd even get to the hospital. Right. And so when my wife got up there, she had, well, her mother had nine. Yeah. And so, you know, surely two can be birthed if, if, if nine can be born. And right. if, if two more can be born, then five more can be born. Right. And if, if one more can be born, why not eight more? I'm just yeah. telling you, God knows how to birth. Yeah. Yeah. Birth it in us, birth it through us. And when you get to read in the Bible, Every one of them women that represents the bride wants to get married. 
And every one of them that gets married wants to have a son. And the reason they first want a son is because they want to secure the fact that the seed is not going to run out and it's going to remain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you on the same page? Amen. If you're not, skip a chapter and get up here with me. And let's not review no more. Let's just move on. She birthed him. When she birthed him, she birthed me. Jesus said, they came to John and said, John, we got troubles. What's the trouble? Jesus is baptizing people uh, down in the river and his disciples. I've had folks almost crucify me because I've said Jesus baptized. I've had preachers meet me after service and say, Brother, Jesus never baptized nobody but his disciples did. Yes, the Bible says Jesus and his disciples were baptized. And that's the reason John's disciples come to him and said, should we forbid them? Should we depart from them? Should we leave them? John said, glory to God. He said he got to rejoice. They said, why are you rejoicing? He said, because oh, I'm the friend of the bridegroom. And I hear the voice of the bridegroom. Something in me gets to rejoice in. He said, brothers, let them go. Well, I must decrease. This has got to increase. I'm the end of the law and the prophet. I'm moving out of the sea. I told you the kingdom was at hand within your reach. Now you're seeing it come into effect. Glory to God. What am I going to do? He said, I'm going to go on. Hey, man to God. I'll let them have my head. I'll move out of the sea. I'll go off of the page. Glory to God. Why? Because you're coming in of a better way and a better day. And some folks are fighting what God's are trying to do. And it's a better way and a better day. Well, glory. Let me tell you something. God wasn't going to let Penina stand there all year long another year. And the Bible said she was an adversary unto him. And there are people in your life right now that are making your own situations be an adversary to you. Throwing it up in your face every day. But I don't want you to know God ain't going to let that go on another year. You're coming into a new realm of prayer and of birthing in the Spirit. And when you go in, it ain't your mouth that's going to cry. Your soul is going to cry out under the Lord. It ain't going to be a prayer out of your mind. It ain't going to be a prayer out of your mouth. It's going to be a prayer from way down here within your belly. Glory to God. Amen. Now the same thing happened to these brides in the Bible. While my daughter, uh, Rebecca, went to Isaac and said, do something about this. I'm buried. Boy, pray. Get an answer. And, and he said, am I the Lord? So he went before God in the Bible said he entreated. We don't know much about these old words in the Bible. Entreated means he poured it out, brother. He wasn't now laying me down to sleep. Brother, he was opening his soul up to God. You can get so hungry for an answer from God. Now I want to tell you something. You got to get alone to do it. Because you won't pray that way in front of nobody else. You'll be worried. Just about the time you'll break through, a little old voice in your ear say, you better chime now. Yeah. Somebody's in the other. Oh, you need the place where you can be alone. Right. The Bible said when Jacob was left alone, he wrestled all night long with an angel and said, hey, I ain't letting you go till I get what I come after. Oh, my God, amen. And Jesus said, men all always to pray to keep from faith. If they don't pray, they're going to faint. You know why you're getting weary? You hadn't come into the right prayer meeting yet. Oh, you're saying words and you're crying out because you're aggravated and tired. But once it ever touches deep enough that you'll let out the groaning travail of Romans 8 and 20, then you will no longer be able to pray according to your mind. But something else called the Holy Ghost, somebody else on the inside of you will take over the prayer and will begin to utter through you groanings which are inutterable in the earthly realm. They can't be done in the earthly realm. It has to come spiritually. And when you ever utter in the Spirit, I want you to know you're making contact with another world and with another dimension and with another realm. Glory to God. Well, hallelujah. Samuel's very name meant prayer. She was birthing a prayer. She birthed a prayer. Woo, glory to God. 
when Isaac entreated the Lord, God gave him twins. Rachel was walking in the house, and I mean Rebecca, and all of a sudden war went on in her womb. She went to the Lord about it, and the Lord said, it is not two sons, but two nations that are at war. Well, glory. And then just at the birthing, just at the birthing, just before getting it broke through, hallelujah, something intercepted, got in the way. Oh, I know you don't know nothing about that, do you? Just when you thought it was here. Just when you thought it changed. Is anybody here? Just when you thought it was going to work out. Another flat tire. Another sore this. Another fire up. Have you ever just knew you was healed? And then you wake up and guess what? It flared up. Right there is where you will either lose or win. If you get up and say something stupid like, well, I thought I was healed. I thought I was healed, but I guess I got to uh, go after it again. Nah, forget it. You didn't believe you was healed. You believed you was healed. You believed you was healed in spite of what you said. What you do is you set up and say, oh, I defy this. Oh, glory to God. I wasn't healed the other night when the preacher laid hands on me. I was healed 2,000 years ago when the Word hung on the cross in my stead and took stripes on his back. But I received the impartation and manifestation of it a week ago when hands was laid on me and the power of God went through me. When the power of God went through me, I received all of my healing. This is a defiance of what I stand for. This is not going to, to sway me in any direction. I am not moved by what I see in this visible realm. But I believe that the visible must come out of the invisible. Therefore, I choose to decree what the the word of God says, I'll bless thy bread and thy water and take all sickness from the midst of thee. Are you hearing me this morning? Oh, praise the Lord. And, 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 and. She got ready to birth and something swept in there. His name was Esau. He was red and hairy all over. And he was a wild ass. You couldn't tame him. He was just like Ishmael. He was wild. And he couldn't stay home. He was always hunting something. He didn't want no birthright. The Bible said he despised his birthright. Come on now. All he wanted was to hunt something else, to find out something else. That's all some of you want, is to find out some more information. You can't stand to pull an empty wagon. You got to get that red wagon full if you bear tail through the whole community just to fill up your wagon. You don't even check to see whether it's so or not. You just tell he says, she says, and they all say it. My God, it comes a web and a weave of nothing but lies and foolishness. And my God, you don't have to shout me down now just because I'm preaching good. Hallelujah. You run from door to door and tell her to post. And some people does it calling it the Lord's work. It ain't the Lord's work. It's hell's work. You trying to see who you can tear up and pull down. And I'm telling you now, glory to God. That's a hunter. That's an Esau spirit. Always hunting. Always got his hands in somebody else's affairs. But not Jacob. He stayed home. He loved the birthright. Everybody preaches the wrong way on that. They all attack Jacob. And he weren't nothing but fulfilling prophecy that the Lord gave his mother before he was ever born. I mean right before here come Esau. And it looked like he was going to just absolutely clear the womb and be the first fruits. But just before the midwife could get him birth, she felt a tug. She felt something pulling. What am I doing here? How, what's wrong? Something's holding this up. Yeah. There's something getting ready to hold it up. Looks like it's going down that way, but it ain't going down that way. Well, glory to God. That's a word for somebody. Looks like it's going down that way, but it ain't going down that way because there's another hand taking hold of the heel of 
that thing and you're not going to be defeated and you're not going to be destroyed and it's not going to be swept out or wiped out. No sir, there's a night midwife said, wait a minute, it's more than just the womb holding it back. There's something behind him. There's a hand on his heel. Hey man, and that Jacob had, had grabbed the hold of Esau by the heel and held him at bay and said, just before you're born, let me let them know that the elder is going to serve the younger. See, Samuel, one of his jobs was to anoint Saul as king. And I can't get into it now, maybe tonight or whenever, but the Saul is the flesh. And that which is first is natural. Always. Oh, foolish Galatians. Because Saul had a good beginning. But he fell into the, the, the will of the flesh. Head and shoulders above everybody else. And he magnified Saul even above his own son. And Paul said in Galatians 3 and 1, O foolish Galatians who have bewitched you, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect? by the flesh. Amen. Now then, I wanted to stop some more places and I think got time to do it so I just line it up for it because one of the scriptures tells us that uh, the Lord, well at the end of this one it said, and it was reported that the Lord hath appeared again in Shiloh. Well, glory. I said glory. What do you mean the Lord hath appeared? Spirit of the seer. Samuel was really raised up. See, you don't understand when you're raised up, Christ is raised up. Hallelujah. And until you understand that, you're still trying to pull from somewhere way off to get an answer that's already on the inside of your spirit. If you get in the prayer closet and pray these answers out in the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't go through half the hell you go through. That's the truth. God would take the wheel. You know that song, don't you? Let Him take it. And I don't just mean the wheel of your Oldsmobile. I mean the wheel of that spirit man on the inside of you. God knows how to turn this thing in the direction that it's supposed to go. But you're going to have to pray these things out. <coughs> you got, that's the spirit of the seer that's coming back into the church. Can you say amen? That's the spirit of the seer coming back into church. Glory be to God. God, and listen, every church from old years up to now that has ever been spiritual and ever had an impact had some praying grandmas in that house that were spiritual enough that knew how to get a word through from God. Amen. Now, my granddad was a seer. He could pray till God showed him whatever he wanted to know. And then when he knew, he was satisfied. If he didn't know, he was the most dissatisfied preacher on the earth. And if he had to go to fasting or whatever till he got through, he did whatever he had to do till the Lord let him see. I'll just give you some prime examples and then we're going to close here. But I, I want to tell you, you enjoyed the word this morning. Did you understand that God will show anybody anything that will let him? And that will give still enough in his presence. Amen. One reason we don't pray like we could pray is because we don't have a revelation of His goodness like you just said. And because we don't believe God's all good, there's fear in us that God might do us some way other than good, but perfect love will cast that fear out of you. Not only that, but if you've got failures in your life, it'll cover. I said it'll cover a multitude of sins. That is to say, if your heart is pure, well, glory, and your motive is true, it don't matter how bad your flesh is struggling, God will meet you and speak to you and touch you and answer you. Come on now. We ain't trying to get saved folks saved. And that's what we all want. We want the Lord to just set everybody in here, saved, sanctified, filled, thrilled, and talking in tongues. He ain't going to do it. 
He'll bring them in the same way He brought you in. He'll draw them by His Spirit and by His love. Amen? Amen. But I remember, you know, before my time came, you know, ever I wasn't even thought of. And there was a family in this church and they were thinking and making a decision about leaving and so forth. And one night, just my, my granddad got praying over it and just believing God to have His way. And one night, the Lord opened heaven and let him see. And he saw this woman and her family on a battlefield. And one by one, he saw every member fall and be destroyed. And so he prayed strongly to know whether to tell her that or not. And God said, tell her. And he called her. And he said to her, uh, this is what God is saying. You're right now, you're protected. You're safe. It's where God has put you. But if you run out there, then your family's going to scatter and they're not going to serve God. And, and he just said it just like he saw it. And that is, well, she had a decision to make. And of course, her decision was to go her way. And in the end, one by one, they drop like flies. Oh, one divorce after another just turned up and people died and suicides and died on machines and everything else. It was just like from then on, everything that that, 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 that was being held back just was loosed on them. Somebody said, Did God do that? No, they walked out from under the covering. You don't walk out from under the covering. I don't care if I was a heathen. I'd keep somebody to know in my life that could cover me. I want somebody. I'm telling you, folks, I want somebody I could call on and say, will you please pray that God will do so? Amen. 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 And then, um, oh, God, there's just there's so many, so many I could tell you. But but you are one thing he told all the time was about the, the girl in the coma. And when he walked in, the one, the mother said, Brother Edwards, we have a private nurse and she don't believe in nothing. Said she's an atheist. Said, Should I let her go? He said, Yeah, go fire. Go let her go. And she walked out. Well, what he knew was there was no use in him going in there and praying the prayer of faith with all that unbelief in that room. She left mad and he walked in, laid hands on her. Suddenly the spirit showed him. Hallelujah. That sometime during the early morning she'd wake up out of the coma and live and not die. And he came out and told the mother that. He went home and three times in the night time God woke him up and every time he did he was in the spirit and she was standing in front of him. And he didn't pray no more. He just raised his hand and said, I thank you, Lord. That you'll bring all the glory. I just felt that go all over me. He said, I thank you, Lord, that you are bringing her out of that car. The next morning, knowing it had happened, he got up and got dressed and drove back to Tampa. And when he got around the corner of the, well, the corridor, the mother come running down the hallway and said, Brother Ambers, Brother Ambers, guess what? Guess what? He said, I know what. That she came out. Of, she said about 2.30, 30 this morning, she woke up and said, the doctor said, She's going to be all right. And you say, praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, we need some We need some Samuels. We need some prophets in Israel. We need some people that know how to pray through until God shows them what was to come. Now, I was uh, praying hard about what do we have that old building on the hill. And it never was no good for nothing. It didn't. I don't care what you tried to serve it in. It never was convenient. You could have children's church and so forth in it, but there really wasn't no kitchen. There's a counter, but no sink. And uh, you, we tried to put a library up there, and that didn't work. You couldn't keep it clean. I don't care if you cleaned it on Monday. On Tuesday, it'd be right back covered in dirt and dust. It's just an old building. The roof what got to where it wasn't no good. I moved my offices up there to the secretary office and redone it, remodeled it one more time. And after about ten or twelve years, why well, it got so bad it just I didn't know what to do with it, whether to repair it again or get rid of it. Right. So I was just seeking the Lord. Amen. Norval Hay said, just tell him my own business, seeking the Lord. 
And I left there at church one night, went home, laid down, went to sleep. When I went to sleep, I woke up, uh, or I had a dream in the middle of the dream. I was dealing with something in here in the sanctuary that was another spiritual point God was making to me. But Mother came running in. She said, I don't know what you're going to do. I said, about what? And she said, uh, <laughs> She said, there's so many cars in that parking lot. I said, none of them parked in a parking place. I don't know how you're going to get them parked. And I went through the hallway, came out, and sure enough, it was a mess. And I, but there's people everywhere. And I looked up, and there was some folks sitting in this van. I looked down at myself, and I was in old work clothes. Old, dirty paint, work clothes. Hey, Amen. And uh, I'll be in them again soon. <laughs> but uh, anyway... I said, oh God, I can't let them folks see me like that. I mowed a dart through the old building, come out the front, and I'll go get me some clothes, or clean clothes. And I darted through and went in that back door, and when I did, there was two old men, an old man and an old woman sitting in a rocking chair, and I don't mean it was for the good. And they was there to hinder what God was doing. They was that, that old spirit. Rocking, looking at me, and and, I, and the old woman looked at me in the dream and said, but that old woman is the old order, oh, always. Nice. She looked at me and said, what are you running for? I said, don't you see all them people out there? And it's fixing to be church time. I said, i got to get myself in there. That old woman looked at me and snickered and said, if I was you, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh, <laughs> I'd leave it just like it used to be. Boy, when she said that, I know that building had to come down. That was God's word to me. Yeah. Amen. I got right on praying about it and who to get to do it. And then about the third, third or fourth night after that, I dreamed and I can't go into all the details because I'm fixing taking off. But I can't go into all the details. But I can tell you, in the dream, I had to have $3,500. And in the dream, I rubbed my hand down in my pocket and when I pulled it out, I was holding $3,500. And then, that, that, and then at the end of that week, I got a hold of the company that come out here. The man had come, called me on the telephone. I couldn't get to have one man go promise to do it. He wouldn't even return my call and I called this guy, he come the day I called him, went and pulled the permits that evening and said, he called me back and said, Pastor, if you give me just $3,500, I can tear that See, God wants to show you. God wants to then, and, and then And then in one uh, Sunday and then two more after that by then, I had $3,500 paid him every dime of it in one week's time, he tore that whole building down and got it out of here. So you see glory to God. All you got to do is yield to the Holy Ghost. And you say praise the Lord. Amen. We better go off this life for a minute, but let's pray for all the folks that watched us today. All them that are going to see it for God to just speak it into their spirit. Lord, we thank you for all these these people in this sanctuary today, but we thank you for those who couldn't be here having a way to get in here and listen to the word today. Father, we speak your blessings. We speak your healing. We speak your touch into their lives today. We pray this word will just find a lodging place. Just go in and do your work on the Holy Ghost, Lord. And we thank you for every one of them that will tune in afterwards and watch it in a rerun and ask that something will come alive. Hallelujah. In their spirit, man, and that you'll confirm your word to their hearts in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everybody said amen, amen. and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we're getting ready to receive the tithes and the offerings, but uh, extra with that today, I want to ask you, how many of you remember when uh, Sister Janet was ministering just a couple of weeks ago about the power of you saying it and speaking it out? And suddenly, we just everybody began to speak new chairs, yes. new chairs, yes. new chairs. That's just a couple of weeks ago. Well, we got called uh, by a brother with a church in Seaburn that's closing up. And we have been given the opportunity, a wonderful miracle, to get 130 of the prettiest chairs you have ever seen for, uh, for $1,200. Would have cost us new almost five thousand. Yeah. Well, look. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. You gonna make me go yeah. home? Oh, <laughs> my God. You gonna make me go yeah. home? You better get a shout in. Yeah. I'm testifying about something. Yeah. You get with me, or I'll go find.
find somebody who will get yes. this. Twelve hundred dollars yes. for, for for almost five thousand dollars worth of chairs. Yes, hallelujah. That's a miracle. Yes, yes. yes. amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I worry about. I worry about whether y'all with me or not. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Well, if you ain't catch another boat. But uh, we went over yesterday and loaded them, uh, loaded up 50 of them. We worked till uh, we worked what, what? 60 of them. We worked till all oh, after 10 o'clock unloading them last time, yeah. and we got them unloaded and put them in the fellowship hall. And the Lord has already given us 300 dollars on them, and then I'm putting a hundred with it. That'll be four, uh, mm -hmm. 400 to leave only 800 left to pay them out. So, all right, a hundred and a hundred, so that's four, five, six hundred. And then there's a hundred, so that's seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand. Praise God. I just need two hundred more, and I'd have it. Anybody do for that? Uh, Make it got a hundred, so yeah, just yeah. one more hundred. All right, that is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Will you rise to your feet and bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord this morning? We bless you in the name of the Lord. Will you say your confession with me? This is my seed. God gave it to me. I'm now reinvesting in His great kingdom for the working of the ministry and I expectantly await a return harvest in every area of my life. We're going back today and get the other half, or well, more than a half. They've got to be out by the day. So we are leaving here and going and getting another load. And I am well, oh, they're beautiful. Wow. Pretty and they all hook together just like I want Praise the Lord. That'll be And if you just hang around here and hide and watch, there'll be carpet to go. Amen. Amen.